You're watching KSG News Explainer. In this video, we are going to talk about India's energy transition. The source for the content is Gagan Situ's article for the Mint. The Prime Minister announced India's target of achieving net zero emissions by 2070. Finance Minister highlighted climate action and an energy transition as pillars of economic development in her budget speech. The message is clear. Climate sustainability is integral to India's economic policy. The energy transition will also have far-reaching implications for energy security and the ripple effects of unfolding events in um, Ukraine are a sobering reminder of its relevance. So, what do we need to do for the transition to happen? There are three parallel transitions or shifts taking shape on our journey towards a low-carbon future. Firstly, shift from fossil fuel based power generation to renewable energy based that is re generation second the transition from petrol and diesel powered vehicles to electric vehicles evs finally a shift from fossil fuel powered industrial manufacturing to that powered by green hydrogen each shift is at a different phase and a holistic transition requires them to intersect this involves five considerations First, the investment challenge is real. The 21st report of the Standing Committee on Energy on financial constraints in the renewable energy sector highlights that India's long-term RE commitments require 1.5 to 2 trillion rupees annually. Actual investments in the last few years have been around 75,000 crore rupees. A study by the CEEW Center for Energy Finance estimated that our power, mobility and industrial sectors would require investments of $10.1 trillion for India to achieve net zero by 2070. It highlighted that conventional sources would only be able to muster $6.6 trillion. Developments suggest that record $5.1 billion fundraising by Indian RE developers in international bond markets in 2021 are promising. So is capital infusion into the Indian Renewable Energy Development Agency that is IREDA which will reportedly allow it to lend an additional 12,000 crore rupees. Still, these could be considered just the first laps of a marathon. Second, we need differentiated interventions. So far, growth in the RE sector has resulted from policy pushes, including power purchase agreements, that is PPAs, solar parks and reverse auctions for tariff discovery. Incentives for domestic manufacturing, new power sources such as offshore wind, new tariff and tender designs, and grid integration would drive growth further. Electric mobility is different. Its 14.4 trillion rupee revenue opportunity is primarily driven by individuals. Building consumer confidence in EVs is key, and the recent budget proposals on battery swapping and interoperability do just that. For green hydrogen, blending and exports offer the possibility of PPA type contracts with highly rated off takers opening up financing options. However, unfamiliarity with the technology means interventions may also be required at the lender level, something EVs could benefit from as well. Third, treat the investment challenge as an opportunity. There was a budget announcement related to a sovereign green bonds. We can expect these bonds to be serviced by rupee revenues with rupee denominated end use. This makes a strong case for domestic as well as masala bond issuances overseas. The budget speech also emphasized further development of Gift City, home to the Indian International Exchange, that is India INX. Several Indian corporates have tapped India INX to raise capital from international investors. India's immense requirements for green finance could be turned into an advantage to develop a homegrown but world-facing capital market. This could establish India as a gateway for emerging economies in Asia and Africa looking to raise international capital for their own transitions.